this is your second go around going up to Annapolis, and your first time around, I think you described as, what was it, the most miserable playing conditions you'd ever been in? What was it like in Annapolis that day? Well, first of all, playing in Navy is an awesome experiment, the experience. Uh, the whole class, the whole academy's there dressed out, and the stadium's awesome, and the ship cannons off the school, but the weather that day was the most miserable I've ever been in a football game. I mean, I didn't, I didn't play that game until I was standing on the sidelines, but it was windy, it was cold, raining, horizontal. It was, Took forever. It was it was just bad. Yeah. Try hiking the mic up a little more on, on the side toward me. Oh, never mind. All right. We good? All right. Um, sorry, a little technical difficulty. Then, all right. And this week is sort of like TCU week. It's a game. Obviously, you guys want to win, but it's not a conference game. Um, so it doesn't have the same weight that some other games do, but uh, there is a special theme to this week, which is the winner of this game gets the Frank Gans Trophy. Frank Gans, of course, coached at SMU, coached at the Naval Academy, played at the Naval Academy. Um, obviously, Coach Jones and the rest of the staff and a lot of the players have very strong feelings about Coach Gans. How much has that been talked about in practice and in meetings this week? How often has Coach Gans' name come up, and how much... How much does that part of it mean to you guys as you get ready for this game? You know, I think, I think Coach Gaines' name comes up a lot, no matter what week it is. But um, I definitely heard more you know, attention to detail this week. Um, definitely just more of the things he said, and especially in the special teams meetings and uh, special teams drills. Um, they, that's definitely something we want to get back, and that's something we wanted to keep last year. But. I think, I think Coach Jans was watching over that game. I think he wanted to go that way this year, and hopefully he'll be watching this year again. We'll get, bring it back to our, our side. You played for him for a year, um, and then, of course, he ran, he ran special teams drills with everybody on the team taking part in them. You hear coaches and players talk about the impact he had on people's lives. Thomas Morstead flew his widow into the Super Bowl last year. What did he have on you? You got to play for him for one year only, but what, kind, what do you remember about him and what kind of impact did he have on you? Yeah, I, I definitely consider myself lucky for knowing him for the short time I did. Uh, I definitely consider him the most inspirational person I've ever met in my life. Um, the way he carried himself and the way he treated everyone, it's just you don't see that with, with most people in this world, and I think that's pretty special. And so having his name brought up almost daily and everyone knows the weight of this, like that, this game carries is pretty special. Um, I think what's what sucks is as the team gets older and the younger guys, um, as the newer guys come in, they don't, they never had that opportunity to meet Coach Gann. So, yeah, they, we definitely pass on his teachings to all the younger guys, but still, he was the person you have to experience to fully appreciate. Even though his his works and his teachings definitely live on through everyone else in the program. Um, it's just, you definitely appreciate it more knowing him. So that when, makes it a lot special. When you face Navy, it's, it's an unusual experience. As you said, the entire academy comes out dressed, dressed formally, I guess. Yeah. You have the cannons going off. You have uh, the planes flying overhead and all the pageantry that goes along with it. But you also get to face an offense that you will never see other than Navy in the triple option. How do you prepare for that? You have basically, what, two, three days of practice to get ready for that. And other than the leg braces that you're going to have to wear because their offensive line will cut block you all day, oh, yeah. how do you simulate that look in practice? And, and what's the hardest part about trying to contain that on Saturday? Uh, the hardest part getting ready for that is the speed. You'll never be able to prepare for the speed at which they run their offense other than playing with them. So uh, we changed up the scout team a little bit, got a lot faster guys in there just trying to help simulate that. Uh, I mean, our first, our first day, we didn't even use a ball on our scout team. We just, you have to stay perfect in your assignments every time because they run, they run it so well, and they catch you one time messed up, they're going to gash you, and they're going to put seven on the board. Right. So you just got to stay assignment perfect the whole night. It's, it's going to be a dogfight. You just got to stay with it and keep battling. One of your teammates, I think it was Pete Fleps, last year said, a defensive player is never more sore than he is the day after playing Navy. What do you, what do, you do to, comp to uh, compensate for the cut blocking? 
Because the, their offensive line isn't that big, no. but they're going to be diving at your knees all day long. And yes, you've got those big metal braces that I've seen all you guys wearing out of practice this week. But how can you handle that and keep them from cutting your knees out and really hurting some of you guys? Um, you just got to stay on them. I mean, you start, you start getting into them and they're trying to cut you, and you start pounding back at them, driving their heads in the ground, just fighting them off the whole time. They're going to gonna start wearing on them, and they're going to say, maybe, hey, maybe I don't want to cut this play. Maybe I'll just try to take them high. So it's just the thing is you just got to keep coming the whole time. You can't let up. It's just consistency. Their defense also isn't as big as a lot of the defensive fronts you're going to see. They go about 250 across the front. They only have one linebacker on their entire roster who's as big as you are. We all know about the cut blocking that their offensive line is going to do to Kevin and the rest of the defense. What does their defense do to compensate for not being as big as some of the guys that are going to be blocking them and even some of the guys running over them? Yeah, I mean, last year was the first time I got to play these guys. And when they came out of the tunnel and they looked like a high school team, I was like, you know, that's not very, you know, these guys are small. But then, uh, you know, when they tackle you or they make a play or they get off a block, they're constantly running. They're just nonstop. If they block you and they come back and they're going to run upfield and block another guy, these guys are in shape. You know, we're going to get, we're going to be tired. They're going to be tired, but they're going to keep going. And that's why we, this week we have to really work at you know, staying with the play along on the opponent because that's what they're going to do. These guys are relentless, so that's what we need to do. In talking to some of your offensive coaches, Navy will go with, I guess, a 3-4 as their base defense, but they also play a lot of 3-3-5 where they drop a linebacker back as a, essentially a fifth defensive back. If you have smaller guys and fewer guys in the box than you normally see, will we be seeing more of you? Are you going to have a, a new career high of carries this weekend? And, a lot more Zach Line on Saturday against Navy? You know, I, I can only hope for it. You know, every running back <laughs> wants the ball. Um, right. But I can't say I don't want to see Kyle just gash him deep with the pass, too. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. But, I, you know, I hope I get the ball more than normal. So I feel like we, we have opportunities there. Okay, but you talk about Kyle being able to gash him with deep passes. Isn't the whole theory of their defense, they play a little deeper than something? Yes, they run all day, and they're very tenacious and all that. But I thought their whole approach... Uh, some of your coaches have said their whole approach on defense is nobody gets behind us. They play deeper with sort of a shell kind of zone. That's not necessarily going to be there, is it? It'll be there. I mean, they do play that where nobody gets by you, but when you have speed like Aldrick Robinson and uh, you know, Cole Beasley, and those, those type of guys, you know, we're going to set them one way and the other guy is going to crease them deep while he's trying to cover L or you know, while he's trying to cover LD. Uh, Cole's going to be down the seam. Um, you know, it's just the way our our offense work, a lot of misdirection, a lot of uh, reads with the wide receivers, and you know, there's gonna be there's gonna be shots, but they gotta be they gotta be taken for granted because there might not be many. Taking shots, when you look at Navy's offense, they run this triple option, and maybe it's partly because you don't see it very often. It looks very complex. Ricky Dobbs, their quarterback, gets the ball, and he's only got what four or five different plays. But it looks like he has a million different variables he can, he can go to in terms of angles they take and different blocks they run behind. What makes this simple? Because it looks, it looks almost like organized chaos on TV, on film. When you prepare for it, is it simple to prepare for? Yeah, our game plan is relatively simple. It's just the thing that's complicated is they're so relentless. We have to stay consistent on our part and stay assignment perfect because the one time you, you don't, tackle your assignment or make the where you're supposed to be at, they're going to gas you and they're going to run up for 40 yards or whatever. And that's part because Ricky Dobbs is a great athlete and he knows what he's doing and they run this every week and they're masters of their technique. So that's, that's the difficult part of it. Navy is 10th in the country in rushing right now. And that's with Ricky Dobbs allegedly having an off year. Yeah. Uh, his yards per carry are down to 2.8, which is about half of what he averaged last year. But they do put up a lot of yards. They traditionally put up a lot of points. Is this a game where you, as a defense, sort of have to leave your ego at the door and, and accept the fact that they're going to get some yards, we just got to have one more point at the end of the day? Do you not worry about stats so much in a game like this? Yeah, I mean, what we, what we want to pride ourselves in doing is worry about our effort, our technique, and our assignments. And then at the end of the game, the points take care of themselves. We, I mean, that's what we always say. So... We just got to hang in there. They're, all they want is three and a half yards of carry. 
If they do that, they'll be happy. So we're just going to have to try to limit that, and then we'll be good. You mentioned Ricky Dobbs, and last year he ran for 1,300, 1300 and some yards, 27 touchdowns last year. But one of the most remarkable things he did last year was he got hurt against your defense, took the following week off, and then ran the option offense for six weeks with a broken kneecap. How tough is this guy? I mean, obviously he's tough, but give me a thumbnail sketch. When, you, when you're describing Ricky Dobbs and what he does well running that offense, how do you describe him and what are your greatest concerns about him? Uh, greatest concern is he's slippery. I mean, he's going to make you miss and he's going to pitch it. When he, he's going to make his right reads. He's going to do everything excellent. Uh, so we just got to stay doing what we do and try to shut him down as best as possible because this is what they do, and we're just going to try our best to stop it. Is that the key, get the ball out of his hands, though, make someone else try to beat you? No, our, our, our key is just to tackle who we're assigned and try to not give him any options. We're just try to shut him down. So. Fair enough. Their defense, again, not as big as some of the defenses you'll see, very opportunistic. They have three interceptions, but they've forced ten fumbles and recovered seven of them. Um, how do you counter an, a defense that clearly is going to come in trying to strip the ball? Do you have a different approach? Are you going to be wrapping up with two arms more than usual? How do you attack a defense like that that's trying to strip the ball as much as any defense you'll see all year? You know, you just got to have better technique um, when you're hitting those holes. You got to make sure you get better pad level, both hands over the ball when you get into, you know, crowded areas. <laughs> They're good at gang tackling. They'll keep you up and then they'll try to strip. Most teams will just try to take you down. But these guys will keep you up and then the whole, every midshipman on the field would be ganging to the ball trying to rip it out. So, you know, again, they're relentless. The guy at the safety 50 yards away will come running over and try to strip it. And uh, we just got to keep, we just got to keep working on assignment and alignment football. Just like on defense, if they miss an assignment, you know, it's going to be a big play. If we miss an assignment, they could blitz on, you know, hit Kyle and, you know, then it's, uh, it's kind of a detriment to our game plan. We talked in the earlier segment about what it feels like in the fourth quarter to wear a defense down. Is this a defense that can be worn down? Yes, they're a little smaller, but as, as you guys have both described, all these guys go 100 miles an hour the whole game. They're in incredible shape. Can you wear down a defense like this? You, I, you know, you can just do the best you can. You know, the football for these guys, I think, is more fun. You know, they have, they have more important things like, you know, going over and killing the bad guy, but... So these guys are training at all times of the day. You know, football is a fun time for them. So when they come out on Saturdays, they're going to be flying around, and having a good time. We just got to come out with the same, you know, same mentality. This is this is a game that we're here to have fun. We're here to win. So we got to come out and fly around. They will come out and fly around. The game is Saturday at 2:30 Central. You can see the game on CBS College and hear the game on uh, the ticket 13:10 a.m. Please help me thank my guests: running back Zach Line, defensive end Kevin Vernier. This is Cody Fans Live.